when we pass through that step then we are going down the column of the electron microscope so if you look into this the basic function of the electron is to project a magnified image of the sample onto the fluorescent screen where it can be viewed by the operator so that gun emits electrons you shape them into a beam that is projected upon the sample the beam strikes the sample and that striking gives rise to numerous events some are transmitted some are diffracted some are deflected some are reflected all sorts of events occur when the electron beam strikes upon the sample now it is you your facilities in the machine that which electron do you use for your information so if you have a transmission arrangement then you can get the transmitted image of the sample if you have a detector where you can detect the x rays coming out because of the striking of those electrons because when the electron strikes an atom it displaces the electrons in the shells of the atom and when they are excited and de excited x rays are emitted and those x rays you have a detector for those then you will know about the chemistry of the material similarly if you have something for the reflection for those reflected in scanning electron microscopy we call them back scattered electrons back scattered means reflected back right then we can do compositional analysis with them right so it depends upon the detectors which you have in your machine so the machine is basically a huge setup and you attach different sorts of detectors or converters to visualize for example electron is not a visible thing electron beam is not a light beam so you need something that which is struck by the electron and they show you something and that fluorescent screen it is picked up a little bit tilted it is actually like this right but for the viewer it can be picked up and when you are taking images recording the image then you completely pick up this screen and the camera is here so the picture or the fraction pack fact uh, pattern is projected onto the camera to the film in the old days we used to have films uh, some camera uh, cameras had 36 some have 50 films and when you take image of this then the camera has two sections so the used one are automatically shifted to the next one and a new film comes in front then you take an other image and it automatically shifted to the used ones and an other appears here so this is the output of those electrons now if you look into this image on the top is the electron gun which is the source of electron then for simplicity i am giving you the very simplistic picture and we will slightly go towards a little bit complicated with time but to make your idea at this level you should be at least able to visualize things in your mind that how they look like 
what is happening inside there because science science is the answer of why so if something is happening and you tell them to somebody and you can't answer the why then you are a newspaper reporter or simply a technician but if you know the answer of why that makes you a scientist right so in the start we the simplistic picture is that when the electron beam come comes out of the electron gun and it is shaped into that beam shape then you have the condenser lens which is the next one there and it is followed by an aperture so if you look into it and it comes from through this aperture then it comes to the objective lens and the objective lens is below the sample they have shown it here just for uh, as a schematic but the objective lens should come after the specimen in the microscope so what the condenser does and what the objective does each lens contributes to the magnification and if that magnification is for example one lens is offering you 100 times magnification two lens will be 10000 right 10000 yes or 100000 <coughs> no 10000 right and if a third lens is added then they will become 1 million 100 and 200 and 200 right so the addition of a lens basically means multiplied by 100 and that 100 is not a small thing because when you talk in terms of hundreds they are taking you to millions and that millions means a million miles a million feet a million inches a million centimeters a million angstroms right so if one angstrom is magnified to 1 million angstroms this means that you transform the invisible world which was inaccessible through naked eye 1 million times and it became your macroscopic object and you can show it to people that i have seen this and i have imaged this so this is not a small thing right when the beam passes through the condenser lens it is well focused the scattered the as we were discussing in the resolution section if you remember we were talking of the very low angle of illumination very low angle of illumination in optical microscopy you can play with that you have a good choice a wide room open room to change the numerical aperture in a of the ready uh, imaging device but here the beam is very narrow because the size of the microscope column starts from here and it reaches nearly that rod electric rod so if at that length slight larger angle is allowed then what will happen instead of the screen you will have the whole floor enlightened and the beams of electron will not be manageable this is just like that when you are coming in the night and you are driving and a flash light comes in front of you so you can see nothing that is why we are excluding many beams which can confuse the image 
which can confuse the diffraction pattern. And that is why the beam, whenever you talk of the transmission electron microscopy, you must keep in mind that the angle is very narrow. So, the things you see in the microscope and the things you interpret what you see in the microscope, please keep in mind that the angle is very, very narrow. So if you are talking of transmission electron microscopy and you are considering larger angles, then it will be a stupidity. So always be logical, whatever you represent. Once the beam comes through the condenser lens, so what the condenser lens does? Look into the meaning of the words. Squeeze down the image, the beam, and to the and to the size you want. So condenser means the device, the component which condenses the beam into the desired size. And at the same time, the voltage is also communicated through these lenses, which accelerates the beam. And you know that the acceleration voltage is basically defining the wavelength of the beam you use. Lambda, which is the key in the diffraction pattern, that lambda comes from the acceleration voltage. And you proved it as your assignment that lambda is equal to 1.5 0 0.5, 0 0.61 and divided by under root V. So it is inversely proportional to the accelerating voltage, square root of the accelerating voltage. So when you increase the acceleration voltage, accelerating voltage, you are decreasing lambda. You are decreasing lambda. The lower the value of lambda, the higher will be the resolution of the machine. Right? And I give you the very simple example of spade, spoon, and tweezer. That if the lambda is larger than what you are measuring, then that lambda will not diffract from there. The lambda will fall like this, it will not go into the finer details. So the meter rod, I give you the example. So if it is not calibrated, the meter rod is not calibrated with centimeter and millimeter, and you mire one inch or one centimeter, you can't mire with that. The same thing is here, that the lambda will not diaphragm if the dimensions of the interplanar spacings are and the wavelength are not mutually comparable. If lambda, lambda is comparable with the interplanar spacing, then it will diaphragm, and that diaphragm will give you the diaphragm pattern. And from there, you can measure the, the interplanar spacings, the d values, right? So that lambda is dictated by the accelerating voltage and the voltage is in your hand, you can increase or decrease it. Nowadays, people are using very high voltage electron microscopes. In the old days, uh, when I was studying, the maximum accelerating voltage in those days was 300 keV. So 300 keV is also not a small thing. 300,000 electron volts, so it is a huge voltage and the beam is very, very highly energetic, right? So, the condenser aperture excludes all the high angle scattered beam because we are interested only in the very low angle beams. Then it hits the sample. And as I told you, many events occur photoelectric effect occurs, Compton scattering occur, deflection occur, backscattering occur, transmission occurs, 
all startup events occur.